Programmers are capable of producing many things. Software by request, software that opens new doors, and software that winks and states, hey, watch this. The Windows 95 Electron app was intended as a joke to take so many layers of development, a JavaScript-based x86 processor emulator running the Windows 95 operating system and wrap it in an Electron app, something that lets software made of web-centric languages run independent of a browser and across multiple platforms. The fact that it actually works is impressive. For those that desire a working copy of Windows 95 in order to purposefully run older applications or games, look elsewhere. Use a virtual machine. The performance difference is night and day. The programmer in me is interested in pushing the Electron app, and the gamer in me is making suggestions of what to feed it. So let's flex the Electron app a bit and then use a virtual machine to show the difference in performance. We'll start with the app by first loading some extra files into the disk image windows95.img. I'm using WinImage. I'll create a folder called Stuff and then drag and drop the files I want into this folder. I'm adding DirectX 6.1, Doom 95, and Diablo. We'll see how that goes. After saving the image, we are ready for the app. When you launch the app, select Discard State and Boot from Scratch. If the machine seems to hit this screen with the cursor a little too quickly in the boot process, use the machine dropdown and select restart. Windows will then try to boot and complain it wasn't shut down properly. After laughing, restart again. The trouble with the Windows 95 startup menu was that it doesn't seem to take input from the keyboard even when the window is in focus. So the only course of action, at least for me, was to reboot again. And the system is finally up. From here, I'll right-click the desktop and choose Properties, Settings, click the Advanced Properties button, select the Performance tab, and I'm going to lower the performance slider one notch. I'll also select that I want to apply changes without restarting. When it requests a reboot, I'll say no. Now I will enter the display properties again and drop the resolution to 640 by 480 and the colors to 256. Since I am not using as much real estate now, I'll resize the application. The DirectX 6.1 folder I installed has sound drivers in it. Let's install those. Control Panel, Add New Hardware, Tell Windows not to search, and choose Sound, Video, and Game Controllers. From here, we can select Creative Labs and Sound Blaster 16 or AWE32. The next screen mentions the resources. Don't worry about it. They are pretty much the defaults for an SB16. When it prompts for the Windows 95 CD-ROM, I'm actually going to point it to the DirectX folder. Drivers, English, and click OK. The sound drivers are installed. The sound actually works already, but we still need a reboot. So whenever you attempt to reboot Windows 95 using the Electron-based app, it appears to hang. I've let it run for a while, but it seems to be a legitimate hang. So I'll use the machine restart menu to get the fresh boot to happen. At this point, it seems the machine is frozen, but it isn't. On a real machine, the screen most likely would say something about needing to run scan disk and to press any key to continue. I can't input during this screen, so we'll just have to wait. And scan disk finally runs. If it finds something wrong, it will ask if I want to fix it, but I can't select yes because the system won't take the keyboard input at this time. We are at the mercy of the findings. If it finds something wrong, we'll have to start from scratch. Fortunately, the scan completes. There is also a way to disable automatic scan disk. However, after giving that a go, a file got corrupted on my virtual disk sometime during the reboot process. So I left it enabled for this tutorial.
Now that we have sound working, let's run Doom 95 again with sound. Unfortunately, the FM synthesis music seemed to cause a lot of noise for me during playback, so I lowered the music volume to zero. And let's see if we have sound. It works! Input is a bit laggy once again, but now we have Doom with sound. And with that out of the way, let's up the ante and attempt Diablo. The first time I ran Diablo, I got pure static, so I'm disabling sound. This copy of Diablo is actually the pre-release demo. It is going to take a while to initialize this game. As DirectX starts taking over, we actually see all the desktop turn black. I discovered something rather interesting during this time. It appears that the graphics on the screen won't update unless I am moving the mouse cursor. So from this point forward, I am frantically moving my mouse back and forth in order to get execution and graphical updates to continue. Oop, here we go. And there is the Blizzard logo coming into view, slowly. So at this point I am pressing escape and moving the mouse a lot in order to advance the game past the teaser and the opening cinematic to get to the main menu. I input DG as the name, but it only took G. Now comes the town loading screen. So I sat here and wiggled the mouse for a minute and a half. And finally, the game appears. I try to get the warrior to start walking and manage to get him to move just before the six minute mark. So as you can see, the game is running. We haven't had a total freeze, blue screen, or other odd happenings. It is just really, really slow. Now for the sake of comparison, let's try Diablo using VMware Workstation Player to see if it is any better. It looks pretty good. Cinematics work. Sound works. Menus can be navigated. And once loaded, it looks playable. I didn't go any further than this, but if dungeons and enemies load, you could probably play Diablo on a Windows 95 virtual machine. If you wanted to do so, of course. There are superior options available. Let's check up on Doom 95. We'll run it in 640x400 with sound and leave music turned up this time. runs quite well. Same story with Doom. Many superior options are available, but here you can see how it runs on a virtual machine versus the Electron app. I'm sure that V86's abilities will continue to improve, and I suppose it is possible that Felix might update the Windows 95 Electron app in the future. However, I would not lean on the Electron app for anything beyond pure entertainment purposes. I hope you enjoyed this dive into the Windows 95 Electron app as we challenged it with a game that seemed to push it to its limits. Leave me a comment telling me some of the experimenting you have done with it or simply what uses you have for a Windows 95 app. If you enjoyed this content, please feel free to check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.